if you are a lover of cinema, you will, sooner or later you will encounter Alfred Hitchcock. I used to teach uh, film language and uh, for five years, or, uh, and I, and I uh, constantly referred to Hitchcock because he is uh, not only very accessible and is somebody that you can easily see the emotional effect his movies and scenes have in people, but also he's somebody that you are not intimidated by as a young filmmaker. He seems to be accessible. The more you know about him, actually, the more you realize how absolutely insurmountable it would be to, to master the technique as he did. But at first it seems approachable because he, he was very popular. Suspense uh, is very hard to pinpoint. Suspense is a device, it's an emotional device. Hitchcock is the master of it. I, I think that uh, uh, he, without a doubt, left, uh, cemented, for example, the spy genre and the thriller genre. But Hitchcock is, one of his peculiarities is, is they are incredibly dissimilar one to the other. And yet they are all, they all bear the imprint of the man. If you think of North by Norwest, which, which essentially predates uh, the James Bond right, movie, sure. you know, and, 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 and the best James Bond ever is Cary Grant. You think about um, Notorious, which is an incredibly elegant, beautiful, uh, uh, constrained uh, picture, completely controlled. And then you think about Frenzy, which is almost a, 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 a vomit of bile, an incredibly brutal movie for its time. Uh, uh, frontal, brutal, uh, raw, and this is the same filmmaker. His movies contain a lot of comedy. Uh, he was a man with an incredible sense of humor, dark, but an incredible sense of humor. But it's not only that, it's the fact that within, what is wonderful about uh, an, uh, an author like Hitchcock is that you think you know the man, but the flavors that uh, reside in the, in the repertoire of this guy are, are very varied. He's not a guy that repeats himself uh, movie by movie, and yet he's one of, one of a filmmaker that if you know uh, at least 40, 45 of his movies, you start seeing him cannibalize himself, like repeat moments exactly almost. Uh, to give you an example, in the 39 Steps, which I think is the predecessor to North by Norwest, there is exactly a moment in which an airplane chases them through a field that is very modest, <laughs> but you can see him trying it again on North by Norwest. Or you have a, a poisoned uh, glass of wine in the foreground in a scene in Lady Vanishes. And then later you see it much better executed, very polished and notorious with, with the poisoned uh, a cup of coffee. You know, uh, you, you, if you watch attentively, you can see him go, eh, I'm gonna try this again. Uh, Hitchcock said, uh, repetition in an author is a style. I think there's a, he belongs to a generation of incredibly important filmmakers. Some are recognized, some are not. I mean, Carol Reed, uh, Jack Clayton, uh, himself, uh, David Lean. I mean, there's, there's, these are masters at work. But Hitchcock is without a doubt one of the top 10, if not the top three, or the most influential uh, filmmaker of all times because Hitchcock, uh, again, influenced everybody uh, that uses film language in some way or another, especially those that uh, approach a film in a, a popular uh, way, like they, they try to reach an audience. And you can talk about Spielberg, Dario Argento, Brian De Palma, or you can go to Chabrol and Truffaut. He encompasses a lot of uh, type of filmmakers that were influenced by his work. There are filmmakers that create sequences that become text. Uh, in you know, like uh, you have uh, several scenes of Hitchcock can be used as textbook for montage. You know, for editing, for tempo, for uh, film language. You know, Hitchcock advocating something that uh, that I believe firmly in, which is pure cinema. He he used to say there is a there's a power to cinema that goes beyond and above the screenplay and the story or the dramaturgy, you know, uh, and 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 I believe like he did absolutely that the the great change in the advent of sound became the fact that many people uh, started filming essentially plays, 
You know, the, when the sound came, uh, you had silent cinema reaching almost perfection. And then sound comes, and a lot of the talkies, quote unquote, become essentially theater plays filmed. And Hitchcock resented and, and mourned right. that. And I think that uh, for me, the first movie I saw of Hitchcock, the one that made me almost realize what a director did, was one of his lesser uh, quote-unquote films, okay. I Confess. Mm. I saw it on TV on, on a red, bright red Philco at my parents' house, and, and it spoke so deeply about a Catholic faith and 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 uh, control the emotions. It really hooked me up, and, and I, I that's an instance I think in which, uh, for example, Hitchcock benefited from a, a performer that he didn't like, Mon Montgomery Clift, who was completely method, and Hitchcock resented that enormously. But Clift brings uh, incredible complexity. That was the seminal Hitchcock. That and The Birds were the first two I saw on TV. Uh, Hitchcock now belongs to, to repertoire cinemas. It, it needs to be seeked, to be found. If you are a lover of cinema, you will, sooner or later you will encounter Alfred Hitchcock. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed. I have so much fun making this series. I feel like there is so much you can learn from listening to filmmakers talk about other filmmakers, and Del Toro and Hitchcock are two of the best. Hopefully I was able to not only present that to you, but also illustrate what exactly Del Toro is talking about. This video was made possible because of Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the channel, that is the best way to do so. There are a lot of great rewards over there, including early access, a bonus audio commentary, and even getting a say in which videos come next. So if you're interested, there's a link on screen. There's also a link to my recommended videos, including my last video in the Masters on Masters series, and all of my videos covering Del Toro and Hitchcock's work. So if you're interested in that, check it out, and thank you for watching.